In this short video, I'm going to be talking with Paul from Tebis, and we're going to be talking about the automation of tooling libraries. Paul, there's many companies, most CAM companies offer something similar, but what, what makes your package different? You know, that why is your tooling library different to the others? Yeah, thanks, Joe. Um, so, firstly, we, we, we promote a, a cloud-based solution for our, cut, uh, our cutting tools and our libraries. Uh, actually, we've got five libraries, so cutting tools is our first one, uh, virtual machines, our features, some uh, standard machining cycles, and also process templates. But the cutting, the cutting tools is one that kind of links into everything. It's one of the most, it's the most important, if you like, and uh, especially to set up. Um, now, what makes us different is, is the way we actually deal with all of the information and the data that goes within it. So to start with, um, we can organize our cutting tools into various different elements. So maybe a, a set of cutting tools per machine, uh, that's in a machining cabinet, uh, even you know, create special tools. But what we do is we break the tools down. So we're actually looking at, if you like, digital twins in, in the real world environment. Mm -hmm. And if we have a look at the screen, uh, what we can see is um, what we actually we promote is modeling all of your cutting tools themselves, the actual cutters, the tool holders, and the intermediate uh, components as well, if we need the tool extensions. Now, what a lot of system a lot of CAM systems do is that you, you get a tool length with a tool holder, and that's mm -hmm. it. There's no idea about how this tool is going to be built up in reality. Uh, Tebris is very special like that because with this, these cutting tools, we actually manage the connections between, um, if you like, with a set of rules. Mm -hmm. So this reflects reality. So Tebris won't let you build a tool which is not able to be uh, built in reality. Oh, okay. Even to the extent of the back end of the tool, uh, the tool holder is going to fit into a certain type of machine. We can control that too. Well, how do we prevent, let's say we're a small company, and you've got two or three seats of Tebis. How, yeah. how do you prevent, you know, m me using one control, you using another, and the tooling library being, you know, my, if my library is different to yours, and we've got different machines, there's quite mm -hmm. quite a lot to go wrong. Okay, so yeah, with the cloud-based environment, what we have is a master tool library sitting on the cloud. This is the, the, the tool library that will be managed. And whenever somebody activates Tebis, they automatically get the download of the latest library, okay? Uh, so everybody's gonna be working off the same library structure, um, nobody's going to be working differently because everything is synchronized in this mm -hmm. manner. It's a lot easier to manage for uh, large installations and even small installations will get a benefit from it mm -hmm. as well. Okay. okay, so that's the physical tool mm -hmm. itself. But how yeah. about the data, you know, maybe cutting data, maybe tool life? What happens if a tool wears, things like this? Okay, yeah, so uh, in the system what we can do is we can manage a lot of parameters within the tool. Um, the first thing I want, really, really want to, like to, to, to show you, first of all, is the actual geometry of the tool, which is very important. Okay? So this is the first parameter that we actually get the most accurate tool geometry. Um, and as you can see here, we have a cutting tool. You can see we have the core of the tool. And all of this is managed within the system. The system knows then where the core is, and this is a non-cutting edge. Um, it could be the fact that maybe uh, we have different types of tools, such as uh, the, the large radius tools, such as barrel cutters. Um, this is really important as well. The system has a highly efficient tool paths, uh, which are able to adjust the tool path for barrel cutters. So you're gonna get shorter machining times on large edges and where it goes into radii. We'll see the tool paths tighten up. Um, but because of this as well, we, we actually, we're gonna be managing and actually simulating correctly the amount of stock, residual stock material that's left in the part. And what a lot of systems do, they that they approximate. So you've actually got more material left on the component mm -hmm. than actually what's there in reality. Okay, so if we've, got, if we've got this tool in library, mm -hmm. and obviously there's the automation mm -hmm. element from the programming side, where mm -hmm. we pick, when we're picking surfaces, do we have to select the tool or is, is the software able to say, we recommend this tool? So the software is actually able to select its own tool. You can pick it manually if you want to, but as far as automation goes, and this is what we're promoting, is that the system can actually pick the correct tool um, automatically for you. So if we use the feature technology, we have conditional statements uh, where the tool can, we can say, right, if, if this is the size hole we want to machine, the system will pick the correct size tool for that hole. It will even look at uh, promoting, okay, in the library, which tool library do I want to use first? Which is, which is the sequence that I have to look for the tools? Uh, and then within the tool itself, we have a lot of information, uh, as you can see here, 
based on what kind of material we're going to use. Um, the machining groups, is this a, the machining groups, is it going to be a large machine we're using? Is it a small mm -hmm. machine? Um, are we roughing or finishing? And all of these can be um, automated in the system um, and give you the correct machining parameters directly right from the start. So that's important, is it? I presume there's default ones in there, but you can also work with your tooling supplier to put your own in maybe. Absolutely, yeah. You can import all of the data from the tooling supplier for geometry and also take all of their data as well. And what's important on here as well is that not just the feed rates, if you like, for, for rapid, for, uh, sorry, for, for, the, for the cutting speed on the surface, but also uh, things like corner uh, feed rates, plunging, ramping, everything is stored in here, even step overs and depth of cut. And that, that's important, sorry, for like if you're quoted a job, maybe you need a rough cycle time, it's going to be very accurate, isn't it? Where absolutely. Quite yes. often when we do these on other cam, maybe it's not so. Yeah, absolutely. So we actually do want a, a, a good cycle time for this, but probably what's even more important is standardization. Uh, standardization, if I'm, if I'm programming, if you're programming, we don't want to be doing things differently because uh, what companies want is a standard quality of part. We don't want variation every time uh, we produce something. Mm -hmm. And by having these stored into the cutting data, we're going to be producing time and time again the same quality of component. That's important, is it? You know, skills gap and all, all the rest of it. We, they all need skilled <laughs> engineers. But <laughs> you're taking reliance away from one human being. A lot of this data is stored in someone's brain, typically, isn't Absolutely, it? And yeah, yeah. You might yeah. need to go and see a, mm -hmm. a, another programmer. Whereas now it's all stored on the cloud, stored across all the seats of Tebis you have. Mm -hmm. So you know, the reliance is on the software rather than the human being. Absolutely, yeah, And but this actually allows us, it, it's not taking the skill away from programmers, actually we're promoting, actually upskilling other people where we can bring people in uh, into your business, programming at the same level as, as people who has, uh, have been there for a long time, a very quick, uh, in, in a very quick short training period. Um, again, this is very important because, you know, companies, that they want, with the skill shortages that are out there, that it's, it's important to get the right people on and program them very quickly. So how about the control of tools within the magazine itself? Yeah, so actually in Tebis, we're actually able to manage tool magazines within uh, the system as well. Um, basically, what we can do is we can set a, a set of magazines for uh, particular machine types, even to the extent of mirroring the, the tool magazines of the first part. We can have a tool cabinet set of tools, even special tools. And, and the system can manage then, um, if you have a fixed location carousel on your machine or even a random carousel, um, to put the tools in the correct positions. Now all of this is possible because of all of the automation in the system and how it links in. Um, but it's very important for managing the machines. And you can even mix and match. So you can have your, your tool magazine running on the machine for a lot of your standard tools, but the machine uh, can automatically then move to a manual tool for something that's special, um, and the system Clever. defines all of this. Um, and these, again, can be attached directly to a, to a virtual machine that's in our libraries structure. So when you select a machine to, uh, to, to, to program with, um, the tool set is automatically applied uh, into this uh, environment. Very clever. I can see how you know the, the tooling library coupled with some of your other automation mm -hmm. You know, elements is going to be good. So, how, how how can engineers watching this video find out more about Tebis and tooling automation? Yeah, so please contact us at the the Tebis office. Um, we'll be pleased to come and uh, visit you on on site, do a demonstration for you, have a look at um, how you're currently working, and and, uh, and offer some um, advice on how we can help you in your your. In, in standardizing your process. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Paul. Thanks for your time. And thank you. Many thanks for watching at home. 